Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Wednesday, January 11th, 2017. And here are some of today's trends in the news. It's an up day everywhere and every place, except Shanghai, just a little bit lower. Everything is up. You know why? It's Wednesday. Trend alert. Trend alert. Trump stock market bump. Fading fast or growing stronger? So I guess they all read that trend alert because everything is growing stronger and we say why. Again, you know the motto of the Trends Journal. Think for yourself. And all the facts are there, you decide. Oil. Oil prices rose on Wednesday by the most in over a month. Boosted by a weaker U.S. dollar, temporarily. And that's why gold went up as well. Again, gold's getting back near that 1,200 mark. Looking good. Maybe it's reached the bottom. But again, you see what's going on around the world, and we keep saying it over and over again, a safe haven asset. So... Oil gains came despite government data showing a bigger-than-expected weekly build in U.S. crude and fuel inventories. But it's news that Saudi Arabia had cut exports. OPEC's number two producer, Iraq, they plan to raise crude exports. On Wednesday, EIA data showed crude production rose notably particularly in the lower 48 states. And the main reason for the oil price rise was the dollar was down, said Phil Davis, managing partner of PSW Investments. U.S. crude inventories increased by 4.1 million barrels last week. That topped both the 1.2 million barrel build, the analyst forecast in the Reuters poll, and the 1.5 million barrel build in Data Tuesday by the American Petroleum Institute. Again, they talk the markets up and down. We see it, again, we're sticking by what we said, 60 bucks is the top of where we see it moving, unless there's some kind of a world blow up and you know, Middle East explodes or something else, man-made or mother nature. And NASDAQ notches record closing high despite healthcare weakness after Trump news conference. And of course, we saw the Dow go up now almost 100 points. So, the Dow industrial average closed about 99 points higher. Quote, I think we're going to get good earnings season, said Bruce McCain, chief investment strategist at Key Private Bank. The question is, can the market sustain a euphoria with what could still be considered relatively modest earnings growth? Good point. We're going to see more about the earnings. And again, read your trend alert. There's our forecast, and we're sticking by it. Not only us, a lot of things are changing for the positive. The World Bank said in its latest report that global economy is expected to see moderate recovery in the coming years with growth rate in 2017 and 2018, 2.7% and 2.9% respectively. That's up from an estimated 2.3% in 2016 for 2017. So, They also expect China's growth to be unchanged. And here's the the kicker. Again, go back to your trend alert. The U.S. economy is expected to grow 2.2% in 2017, but the bank added that U.S. policies will likely undergo changes under the new U.S. administration, which could have significant implications for both the U.S. and global economy. So they're saying it could go higher. Again, read your trend alert. We say the same thing. And we give the why. They don't. Ah. But according to Deutsche Bank, Trump's plan could 
double U.S. GDP growth by 2018. I guess everybody's reading out trend alerts these days. Okay, moving on to some other things with gold going up in Bitcoin. And again, we've been saying why Bitcoin's been going up, and here it is. Beijing scrutinizes Bitcoin price surge as it seeks to curb renminbi outflows. Bitcoin's Chinese price rose 145% in 2016 as the renminbi suffered its worst year on record, weakening 6.5%. Chinese regulators have taken steps to ensure Bitcoin is not used to facilitate capital flights, and it goes on and on and on. So it's a very volatile cryptocurrency. But it's looking good in the cashless society and societies where currencies keep going down. And hey, speaking about currencies going down, peso sinks as fears grow over Trump rhetoric. The Mexican peso plunged to another all-time low against the dollar yesterday. Turkey's half measure failed to stem currency fall. The Turkish central bank failed to stop the leader's free fall with its limited steps to boost liquidity in financial markets and make political pressure to keep interest rates low. The Turkish currency tumbled as much as 1.9% during trading in Istanbul in, on Tuesday, its fourth straight record low. Go back to bitcoins, go back to gold. What would you rather have? Pesos or lira, and we could go country after country. You're going to see more of it. Again, the destabilization factor is real. Chinese investment in EU dwarfs flow going other way. It says about how much China is investing overseas and how little money is going back into China investing. In Europe, it's actually negative. In the United States, China's acquisition flows into the U.S. also exceeded those in the opposite direction for the first time last year. Chinese companies are likely to have exceeded 200 billion in 2016 in the U.S., double the amount of 2015. And going back over to Europe, Chinese direct investment in the EU surged 76%. EU acquisitions in China, by contrast, fell for the second consecutive year to only 7.7 7.7 billion. So, buy and sell China. It's one of your top trends. There's still a lot there to sell, but they have a different deal. You can't own the whole company over there. You only can own 49%. But China could buy up everything they want, mostly everywhere else they want to buy it. And what else do we have here? Positive news again, going back to your trend alert, why current events form future trends, and you look at the whole picture rather than taking it little individual pieces. Put the pieces together. It's a puzzle. It's a trend puzzle. Stanley Black and Decker to open U.S. plant after Trump's border tax threat. Okay, that was one. I talked about Ford and Chrysler yesterday. And the big talk at the auto show going on. Made in America. You stamp it. Apple seeks to expand manufacturing in Arizona. Read your trend alert. Because it's a totally opposite picture, you little liberals, from under Obama. You remember, folks. I'm going to renegotiate that NAFTA when you vote for me in the Rust Belt back in 2008. But I'm a liar, and I only said that to get your votes, because you remember he was pushing the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Story in today's Financial Times, U.S. trade czar warns against localization push. God forbid we should be local. How dare we want to manufacture here? Tariffs have become a dirty word. Multinationals should be able to use slave labor, mark the products up, and sell them to us, and give us lousy jobs. Again, Only the facts, folks. Under Obama, according to Harvard and Princeton, it was over 10 million jobs he created. 94% of them are temporary. Hey, read your trend alert. Donald Trump's threat 
to force companies to locate factories in the U.S. because risks undermining American competition. In the long term, while there's plans to rip up the vast Pacific Rim trade pact, would hand China strategic victory. The outgoing U.S. trades laws won. Michael Froman. I'm not even going to word another word of this little lousy trader loser. Oh, him and brilliant Larry Summers, too, are shooting off their mouths. Larry Summers, who everything that he's done failed. But they pump up this guy, and boy, you need a lot of gas to pump that blimp up. He's always brilliant with all his stinking rotten... Bullshit level, DEPCON 5. Well, actually, it's not DEPTCOM 5. It's horse shit. Eh, anyway. Mike Froman, architect of President Obama's ill-fated push for Trans-Pacific Partnership with Japan and 10 other economies, told Financial Times that Mr. Trump's vow to abandon the deal risked driving more U.S. allies into China's... Nah, you... To you, Froman, we're going to get a job now, huh? Who's going to pay for your... To, to suck off the public titter. You can't do it anymore. Another losing, lying freak. Selling out our country with an attitude. Okay, hey, speaking about attitudes and selling out our country, all you Obama fans, because Obama, he gave his farewell address to the nation. Yes, we did. Oh, yeah, yes, we can. Yes, we did. Oh, yes, we did. Hey, here's one of the things. Yes, we did. An airstrike by Saudi-led coalition near a school in northern Yemen on Tuesday killed five people, including two children. Yay, Obama sold the Saudis more bombs and munitions than any other president. Yeah, that Obama. That the United States is a coalition member of this killing crew. Yes, we did. Hey, how about them drone strikes? Yes, we did. But the toilet paper over here, instead of writing that story about the massacre going on in Yemen, here's what they have. The little paper slime, the New York Times. Arms seized off Yemen appear to be made in Iran. When they have this picture over here, the weapons, the little guns, little tiny things. Photographs recently released by the Australian government show that light Anti-armor weapons seized from a smuggling vessel near Yemen's coast appear, appear to have been manufactured in Iran. Oh, so they manufactured there. Hey, a gun's manufactured in America and some madman takes it up and kills somebody. Does that mean that the gun com company in America sold it to him? No, but that, you don't need the facts because you're the New York slime. All you do is sell hate. And wars. Here we go. Further suggesting that Tehran has had a hand in high seas gun running operations to the Horn of Africa and the Arabian Peninsula. Based on nothing, CJ Chivers or Chivers and Eric Schmidt, or is it shit, right? a sentence further suggesting that Tehran has had a hand in high seas gun running operations. Appears, but they now make it suggest. That's the disgusting propaganda. And again, that story that came out about Trump in Moscow, the golden shower story, a total fraud, CNN put it out there and others, BuzzFeed, and nobody takes is sorry to do it. And then they have the nerve to do this. In case you're not doing anything later in the week, Journalism Ethics, University of Wisconsin Madison. I should say later in the year. Truth, trust, and the Future of Journalism, featuring the Washington Post's Margaret Sullivan. <laughs> Join the Center for Journalism Ethics as we explore critical issues facing journalism today. Fake news, conspiracy theories, disinformation, 
and public trust. The Washington Post, in a battle for the New York Times to become the toilet paper of record. The Washington Post, who put out the fake story about Russia hacking the Vermont electrical system. The Washington Post, who put out the fake story about the people, prop or not, a shady organization who won't give their name and they built them up to become a legitimate one, accusing people like Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, King World News, and others, who I'm on frequently, and of course, Paul Craig Roberts, a friend of mine up here for Occupy Peace, and a contributor to the Trends Journal as agents for Russia. Yeah. Journalism and ethics at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Throw your money away and don't forget to send your kid to school there so they can become a prestitute. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's trends in the news.